As with almost all parts, we will start with a sketch and use it to create a pad as the cylindrical part of the rim. In the Essentials toolbar, click the Position Sketch command. Next select the ZX plane either in the Geometry window or the Model tree. In this sketch we will create a circle coincident with the sketch origin. Remember to start the circle on the origin for it to automatically constrain it. Use the constraints to dimension the diameter of the circle to 127 mm. Exit the sketch using the Exit App command. With Sketch 1 selected, click the Pad command. Use the Thin option to make the pad hollow. Set the first limit length to 55.8 mm, set the thickness one value to 5 mm. This will add material to the inside of the circle. Click Preview to see the result, then click OK to create the pad. In Katia we can reuse sketches for different features. In this step we will use Sketch 1 to create a second pad as the center of the wheel rim. Expand the tree under Pad 1 and select Sketch 1 in the Model tree. In the Essentials toolbar, click the Pad command. Create a pad with a length of 2.5 mm. Click OK to create the pad. We will now create a second sketch to be used for the next pad to make the inner hub of the rim. Create a sketch on the ZX plane. This sketch will be another circle, coincident with the origin, similar to sketch 1, but this time it will be 50 mm in diameter. Exit the sketch when you are done. With sketch 2 selected, click the pad command. Set the first limit length to 27 mm. Click Preview to see the result, then click OK to create the pad. We will now use the Draft command to taper the face of Pad 3. In the Refine toolbar, select the Draft command. Change the angle to 10 degrees. Select the cylindrical face of Pad 3 as the face to draft. Select the end face of pad 3 as the neutral element. Make sure the pulling direction points in the positive Y direction, this is shown by the arrow. Click Preview to see the cutting planes and how the draft will be created. Click OK to create the draft. In this step we will create the outside flange of the rim using a shaft. A shaft rotates a sketch around an axis to create geometry. Create a sketch on the YZ plane. To create the geometry of the sketch, we will use the rectangle tool. Draw a rectangle near the top of the cylinder. Next, we will draw an axis which the shaft will use to revolve around. The axis command can be found under the line command. Start the axis on the origin point and draw it horizontally. Next constrain its length to 80 mm. Now we will constrain the rectangle. Start with the 5 mm horizontal length. Next, we will create the 127 mm and 140 mm using two different methods. Both will give the same result, so choose whichever method you prefer. Start with a length constraint between the lower edge of the rectangle and the axis. In the contextual pop-up, select the Radius or Diameter Constraint option. Adjust the length to 127 mm. Now do the same with the upper edge of the rectangle, but this time right-click and select the Radius slash Diameter option. Adjust this length to 140 mm. As you can see the rectangle can still move from left to right. Thus, we will create the final constraint, which is a coincident constraint between the right edge of the rectangle and the edge of the rim. Start with a length constraint and then use the coincident option in the contextual pop-up or by right-clicking and choosing coincident. As you can see the sketch is now fully constrained. Exit the sketch using the Exit App command. 
Use the sketch to create the flange of the rim using the shaft command. As you can see Katia automatically detected the axis that we created in the sketch. Check that the type is angle and it is set to 360 degrees. Click OK to create the shaft. See how it revolved the rectangle around the center to create the flange. In this step we will round off some of the edges using the edge fillet command. In the refine toolbar, click the edge fillet command. Make sure the radius is set to 5 mm. Now select the three edges of the rim which are shown. Click preview to see the result. Click OK to create the edge fillets. In this step we will use a pocket to remove material from the rim to reduce the weight. Create a sketch on the ZX plane. The geometry is a single circle above the horizontal axis, so use the circle command to create it. Remember to start the circle with the center in line with the vertical axis to automatically create the coincident constraint. Constrain the diameter to 24 mm. And the height from the horizontal axis to 42 mm. Exit the sketch and use it to create a hole with the pocket command. Set the first limit to up to last and leave the offset at 0 mm. Leave the second limit at 0 mm. Click OK to create the pocket. A powerful feature in CAD software is to reuse features in different patterns. This allows you to only change one feature and it will update to the entire pattern. So, in this step we will use Pocket 1 to create several holes in a circular pattern, reducing the need to create them all separately. First, select Pocket 1 in the Model Tree as the feature to be patterned. In the Transform toolbar, click the Circular Pattern command found underneath the Rectangular Pattern command. For the reference element select the outer cylindrical surface of the rim. This will automatically use its axis line for the rotation. Under the parameters drop down, use the complete crown option. This will equally space all the instances over the complete 360 degrees. Increase the number of instances to 5 and see how they change their spacing. Click preview to see what the result will be. Click OK to create the pattern. In this step we will create a hole in the center of the rim for the bearing and axle to fit into. Since we want the hole to be concentric with the center, we will use the edge when creating the hole. Similar to the first tutorial, select the circular edge of the tapered cylinder, so that Katia knows to place the hole concentric to it. In the Essentials toolbar, click the Hole command. Now select the face of the cylinder where we would like the hole to be placed. Change the hole type to a counterboard hole. Change the limit type to up to last. If we try to set the main diameter, we will get an error because it is larger than the current counterboard diameter. So, we will have to set it first to 42 mm, and then we can set the main diameter to 35 mm. Finally, change the counterboard length to 11.25 mm. Click Preview to see the result. Click OK to create the hole. In this step we will mirror the geometry to make a symmetric part as this is a more efficient method of modeling instead of having to make both sides, we create one and then mirror it. First, ensure that nothing is selected by clicking in an empty space so that all the geometry is mirrored and not just a selected feature. In the Transform toolbar, click the Mirror command. Now select the ZX plane as the mirroring element. Click Preview to see the result, as you can see, we now have two symmetric sides to our rim. Click OK to create the mirror.
In this step we will change the color of the part body to help distinguish it from the other parts in an assembly. Then we will add some materials and compute the weight. In the Tools toolbar, click the Object Properties command. Select the part body in the model tree. Then under Graphic Properties change the color to match the displayed model. Next, we will use the Material Browser to apply the materials. This command brings up the search window. Use the Restore Down button and resize the window if necessary to see the model tree and geometry. In the search bar, type in name of the material to be used, in this case it is magnesium. In the 6W tags, under Source, choose the public database as the collaborative space to search in. If you do not see the tags column, click the 6W tag button next to the search bar. Find the magnesium core material in the search results. Click the arrow on the right-hand side of the tile and then select Apply in the menu. Click on the part at the top of the model tree. In the contextual pop-up, ensure that the material is applied to the part. Then select the green check mark. Next search for painting red glossy. Use the same command to apply the painting red glossy covering to the part as well. Under materials, you should now see the two materials that are both applied to the part. When you are finished close the search window. Remember that if you cannot see the material on the geometry, you need to change the viewing mode to shading with material in the view toolbar. We will now compute the weight of the part. First, we need to activate the part product by double-clicking on the top of the model tree. Note that this will change the app to the assembly design. If not, use the compass to change the app to assembly design. In the Tools toolbar, click the BI Essentials command. In the pop-up window, select the weight definition from the drop-down menu. Click on the part and then select the second hyperlink in the pop-up to compute the weight. Click the Update command at the top of the weight table to refresh the values. As you can see Katia computes the inertia values for the part. Close the weight computation and the BI Essentials. Finally, reactivate the 3D shape to go back to the Part Design app. Another powerful feature in CAD software is the ability to copy items from one part to another and reuse them. So, in this step we will extract some of the outer surfaces of the rim, so that we can use them in the next tutorial to create the tire geometry. First, make sure the 3D shape is active and we are in the Part Design app, since in the last step we were computing the weight in Assembly Design. If it is not, double-click it in the Model tree. If you changed the viewing mode in the last step, it will be helpful to change it back to shading with edges. We will now add a geometrical set to our part. A geometrical set can be seen as a folder in which we can store and organize surface and wireframe geometry. When models become complex it is good practice to name and sort your geometry into different geometrical sets. In the Structure toolbar, click the Geometrical Set command. In the window, name the new geometrical set to the name provided and then click OK. Now we will switch to the Generative Shape Design app to access the surface commands. Click on the 3D compass in the top left. Search for the Generative Shape Design app and open it. In the Transform toolbar, click the Multiple Extract command found under the Boundary command. This command allows us to extract the surface from multiple faces on a body and then joins them together. Select the three faces shown in the geometry. Keep all the default settings so that no extra surfaces are extracted. Click OK to create the new surface. As you can see Katia has created a new surface which we can use to create the next part. 